because it's a low budget film, I and I wanted like realistic props, I bought a real meat cleaver for the shoot. So we have um, Sean here who is like very dedicated to the role. So he's like motioning the meat cleaver and pretty much I, every take I just go cut, 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 because I'm afraid that he's really going we're gonna have like real blood in the film or something. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Sean Kelly Interviews podcast brought to you by Sean Kelly on Movies. Uh, this past uh, weekend was the uh, Blood in the Snow Film Festival and I personally was very busy at the festival because I actually had a film in the festival. I um, directed a, a short film called Itch which had its uh, world premiere during uh, Blood in the Snow's uh, short block so I was at the festival for both the premiere and also my um, usual duties as media. And um, even though I was um, busy with my film at the festival, I uh, still was able to do a couple interviews, which will be the um, subject of this um, episode. Um, But first, I should do some housekeeping and point you to uh, my uh, Patreon, which is at um, patreon.com slash sk on movies, and um, you will find that I have posted a uh, new exclusive audio clip for patrons, and um, this is actually related to Blood in the Snow. Um, Back in uh, 2015, I um, interviewed the people behind the films She Who Must Burn and White Raven, and uh, for certain reasons that you will probably guess when you listen to this clip, I just kept the interview shelved for the past two years, but I thought as part of my Blood and Snow coverage, I would post it for patrons, and um, if you give me some money, you can listen to to it to your heart's content. I doubt you will be able to listen to it any other way because it's a definitely an interesting interview. So now on to the uh, first interview of this episode. I um, talked with uh, director and star Jeff Sinizak and um, producer Tanya Dodds about the um, Blood in the Snow opening film Red Spring, which was having its world premiere at the festival. So I'm going to play you a clip from the trailer, and then we'll go right into the interview. Spare tire would have been a good idea. I have to remember that the next time I'm fleeing vampires cross country. There are millions of them by now, maybe billions all around the world. There is literally nowhere that you can go that they can't follow if they want to. We can try my dad's place. It's remote and it has other benefits. A bomb shelter? If we're discovered down there, we're trapped. If it's airtight, like she says, they won't find us. Okay, so um, talk about um, Red Spring. <laughs> uh, Red Spring is a post-apocalypse thriller set in a world that has been overrun with vampires, and we center on a group of uh, survivors on the run looking for a place to hide and trying to deal with the fact that everyone they know who's ever been alive is no longer alive. 
So um, how long have you been working on this film? <laughs> uh, we shot in 2015, so it was a two years of post, two and a half years of post. Uh, before that, uh, I technically wrote it in 2003 and tried to get it off the ground repeatedly. It was optioned several times, so technically I've been working on it for 14 years. Whoa, well, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> a long time. Okay, so what was the biggest challenge with your film? <laughs> Um, I mean, obviously the biggest challenge is like when you're doing something very independent, um, is really figuring out that the you know the small budget that you have, um, how do you make that into an action film that usually requires a lot more money? Um, on top of that, too, it's you know it is a set during the apocalypse, so you can't show a lot of people, you can't show power being on, so you have to also really think about locations and you know how do you get your shots that show. Not a ton of people. <laughs> Cars as well. It's we not supposed to be any vehicles around, and yet we shot next to a busy highway for 18 days. So there was a lot of work to be done there to hide things. Yeah. So what were your major influences? Uh, in writing, I would say the, the old uh, zombie films, the old Romero zombie films were probably the most in terms of the type of feel we wanted for the... Uh, the level of peril our characters faced. In terms of the writing, though, I would say actually much more Whedon. It's a... Uh, it's got a lot of humor uh, through the lines, and I think that was certainly borrowed from things like Buffy and that. Not quite to the same extent that they use it, but that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So um, you've been um, known as an actor, so how, how does it feel moving from acting to directing? <laughs> It was, a, it was a challenge. I was saying this to somebody earlier. Is that The weirdest thing about that is that you, as an actor, you get so used to the idea that you are not supposed to give direction. If you do, you're going to get fired. And overcoming that instinct to, to hold my tongue was actually really, it was really challenging. It took a lot of effort to start telling people, okay, here's what I'm seeing and here's what I'm thinking. Um, but I eventually got used to it. <laughs> And I mean, there's also the added challenge of he also was an actor in it as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, he's he's got his regular actor sensibilities of like, oh, you don't give direction to your fellow actors, but he's also the director. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, that's a, a hard switch to flip yeah, finishing, instantaneously. Finishing a scene and turning to the person you just acted with and saying, now here's what I'm thinking. Is, uh, <laughs> feel, it feels rude, but it's not. Cool. So, well, you said you were inspired by um, zombie films. Some- why did you go with vampires? <laughs> um, well, in 2003, I had started writing a zombie apocalypse novel. Mm-hmm. And in 2003, there were no zombie apocalypse novels. There are tons now, but back then it would have been a really uh, unique uh, type of literature. Mm-hmm. But zombie apocalypse movies were everywhere. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had a director friend who really wanted me to write a new script. He wanted an action horror, and I thought, well, screw this, then I'll, I'll scrap the, the novel and write it as a film. But there were so many zombie apocalypse films that it would have been useless to do so. So I just changed it to vampires, and suddenly we had a, a new genre. Now, in 2003 as well, there, to the best of my knowledge, aside from Vincent Price and Last Man on Earth way back in the 60s, uh, there had never been a vampire apocalypse movie. So mm-hmm. I thought it would be a, a really unique thing. There's been a few now. Yeah. And I think, uh, so I, think uh, I haven't seen the film yet, but I was looking at some of the fans' reviews, and think there's comparisons between this and The Walking Dead. I think, there's, I think there's a fair comparison to draw there. That'll be a, a touchstone that most people are familiar with nowadays. It was written, obviously, well before either the TV show or the comic book existed, so those those parallels are coincidental, yeah. but I think they're also unavoidable. Okay. And what does it feel having the opening slot of Blood and Snow? Um, obviously, we're very honored, and it's humbling, um, because it, that's something we didn't expect at all, so we're, we're really excited to, to, to be the opening film of Blood and the Snow. Okay. That's yeah, it. Thank, thank you. you very much. Appreciate that. What's your name again? Uh, Sean. Sean. Awesome. Thanks thank so much, Sean. Thank you. And that was my interview for um, Red Spring. I should probably apologize for all the background noise as these interviews were um, recorded at the Monarch Tavern in between the uh, Media Day festivities. So, um, my next interview is for the closing film, and it's um, with um, director Audrey Cummings, who um, made the closing film Darken, and I had actually interviewed Audrey a few years ago for her debut film, Berkshire County, so this interview was um, equal parts catching up, and as well as talking about Darken, so I'm going to play a clip from the trailer, and then we'll go straight into the interview. I've heard it spoken amongst the outliers. The rumblings of a rebellion.
There is a traitor among us in this room right now. Mother Darkin. You give us the air we breathe and the food we eat. You keep us safe from the outside and for that we are thankful. Okay. All right. So, um, hi, Sean. Hello. <laughs> so, um, talk about Darkin. <laughs> so, Darkin is a sci-fi fantasy thriller. Mm -hmm. It's my follow-up feature to Berkshire County, which mm -hmm. played in bits two or three years ago now. I can't recall. Twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. Oh my God! Good memory. <laughs> um, and it's uh, it's about this girl who ends up in a parallel world. Mm -hmm. And has to like fight to save herself and the world mm -hmm. and the people in the world. Um, so, this is like a larger budget film than Berkshire County? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lo a considerably larger, 10 mm -hmm. times more. Mm -hmm. um, but it was produced by Shaftesbury Films. Mm -hmm. And um, they, I guess they went through the, you know, the funding room, the Telefilm, OMDC, tax credits, all that kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. bigger, bigger than Berkshire. Yeah. So, what were the challenges of going bigger than Berkshire? <laughs> oh, uh, well, interestingly enough, I, th I would say the biggest challenge was trying to fit so much, because it's an ensemble film, green screen, VFX, fight sequences, like it's, it's a big, bigger film. And I had less time to shoot it than I did Berkshire. I had 14 days, so um, I would say that was the challenge: trying to get, trying to, trying to be so ambitious in such, in a really tight shooting schedule. Yeah. And I kind of saw that there's like, like a web series that come, come uh, a series that come, come, goes along with it. Yeah, it's really cool. Shaftesbury, mm -hmm. Shaftesbury. I guess the genesis of the whole the whole idea was they were trying to figure out a way to get. How do you reach audiences with low budget indie features? Um, especially given that there's all kinds of, like they're, the audience is eating up content in all kinds of different ways now, right? So they kind of created this darkened experience where there's the feature film. Mm -hmm. I just finished shooting the 10 episode digital series and, and which comes out in the new year. Mm -hmm. And then after the digital series, there's a VR experience. So you get to walk into Darkin and ex and like walk through Darkin and experience it. So it's like a whole multimedia... Yeah, platform of some sort. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's cool. So it's, they're calling it the Darkin experience. Yeah, so I, it'll be interesting. Because I've never... I, it's my first digital series. I've never... I don't know, I've never done that before. So it's all new territory for me. Um, and this is our Canadian premiere, yeah. and we played in one festival prior to this, mm -hmm. the Buffalo Dreams Film Festival, and we won Best Sci-Fi Feature. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we're just just launching. Yeah, what, the, what does it feel like having the closing slot of the festival? Amazing. <laughs> uh, it's also very scary because it is my first time sitting with an audience. Um, so I'm going to be really nervous, very vulnerable <laughs> that night. And I think, I think like the festival awards are like right after your screening, so. <laughs> <laughs> and then the party, <laughs> closing night party. So it's going to be one big night. Yeah. And it's fun because actually, uh, because it's a Canadian premiere, 
we're, a whole bunch of our cast and crew have never seen it, so it, the audience is going to be filled with friendlies, you know, like people who just are excited mm -hmm. to be there and excited to see the film. Yeah, but, uh, I saw like a TV interview the other night of some of the actors from the. Oh, the, on CP24. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Bea. And. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with Paul Amos because I watched Lost Girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we got Paul Amos from Lost Girl. We have Ari Millen from Orphan Black. Mm -hmm. um, and just the cast is amazing. It's a fantastic cast. Uh, Christine Horn, Oluduke Adiyali. No, Christine Horn. <laughs> yeah, it's an amazing cast. Uh, and then the digital series is a is a prelude to the feature so it's the world before the feature and we've got Jodel Fairland from Dark Matter and Silent Hill and she's an amazing actress so she's in that as well yeah so it's good it's exciting uh, so I, I'm going to keep the specific plot of Dark and Under Wraps or <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah yes <laughs> but Mother Dark is is a uh She's, she's like a god. She's like a goddess who created this world. Uh, she's kind of like an X-Men in a way, who can create space with her mind. And she created this world with her mind and then brought people into Darken who were in a place, in a dark place, and needed help. So she brought them in. And they're, they've been around forever. Yeah. Uh, I say that the posters are just sitting with the hand and the black liquid. And <laughs> Yes. I think it reminds me of like the science fiction show I was on a few years ago. I forgot what it was called. It starts with an H. Yeah. Okay. A couple of years ago? Um, okay. Yeah, that means I was going to say Helix. Helix! Helix! Helix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what, were, what else can I tell you? My influences were things like Blade Runner. Silent Hill, Dark City, um, things like that. Oh, you know what else I could tell you? We shot here in Toronto. We shot in uh, Liberty Village. Uh, there's a studio there that was pretty close to being. Um, What's the word? Demolished? Yeah, demolished. We're the last film to have shot there. The air in there is questionable. <laughs> asbestos, they had asbestos issues. It's like, I don't know. So, anyways, we're the last film to shoot in there. And now it's been demolished officially. And I think it's going to be condos. <laughs> Everything's going to be condos. Yeah. Out of stairs is going to be condos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I'm excited and scared. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. And that was my interview with Audrey Cummings about uh, Darkin, uh, which I should add was actually one of the big winners of the um, Bloody Awards of London Snow. It uh, won the awards for Best Director, Best Cinematography, uh, Best Score, and uh, Best Poster. Though, well, um, surprisingly, the Best Feature went to the film Buckout Road. Uh, so uh, that's all um, for uh, this episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed these two interviews, and I will see you next time.